Thanks to Cooler Master for sending me these review samples and welcome back to the Indian PC hardware channel. Today we are looking at the Hyper 212 Spectrum V3 and the Hyper 620S. First, let's check out the Hyper 212 Spectrum V3. You can see the box from all the sides and it actually looks quite nice. The back has all the features and everything, so does the left side. Opening it, we can see the really actually quite good protection Cooler Master has used for the packaging. And the mounting hardware which comes with Master Gel Pro Thermal Paste. I would have liked to see a better one but you know, can't have it all. It's a quite budget and actually very good value cooler as we'll see later. Here's the ARGB fan. Oh yeah, this thing does have ARGB. I forgot to mention it earlier. The fan can go between 650 to 1750 RPM plus or minus 10% because, you know, manufacturing tolerances. You can see the protection the cooler has for the contact surface. You know, can't have any scratches otherwise you will ruin the performance. The bottom has all the warranty and uh, other information like the instruction manual. And here's everything. I gotta say, the cooler looks quite good in my system. Since it uses an ARGB header coming off of your motherboard, it can do whatever effects your motherboard is capable of. Rainbow, static, meteor shower like on MSI, anything. I personally like a static white color, so I have this in my B-roll, but I have a rainbow as well. And now onto the Hyper 620S. When you open the box, the first thing you get is the manual and the information about the warranty. Beneath those, you get the mounting accessories and the cryofuse thermal paste. The cryofuse in itself is like 450 to 500 rupees in value. The dual tower cooler features 6 heat pipes and 2 ARGB fans. Taking out the cooler is a bit of a pain, I must be honest. Like, I'm not sure why this was designed this way, but it was. The packaging is top notch, I understand why they did this, but it's slightly overkill. It took me about 5 to 10 minutes to figure out how to remove the cooler from the packaging. You have to pull from one side and pull the cooler in the opposite direction from the other side at the top and nothing in the instructions mentions that you have to do this. You just have to figure it out by yourself. That is after removing the fans because if you don't remove the fans, it will damage the fins. Now comes the difficult topic of talking about the mounting system of the Hyper 620S. As you can probably hear in my voice, it's extremely disappointing. If you use the wrong standoff by complete accident because they look identical, the AM4, AM5 and the Intel LGA ones, there's a good chance it will probably get stuck and you'll end up scratching the hell out of your motherboard where you mounted the standoff. Because that's exactly what happened to me. I was looking at the instructions, like half a second later without realizing I picked the wrong ones, I picked the wrong ones and it just got stuck completely. It desperately needs to be made clear what you're supposed to use and not supposed to use. The manual uses an OK system for alphabetically marking what needs to be used and avoided. The actual packets of the parts though are completely unmarked. This needs to be rectified in some way. This is on Cooler Master to figure out. I'm not gonna knock the cooler for this because this is a complete lapse in judgment of whoever was making the design for the packaging and instructions but the benchmarks will carry on because i managed to mount the cooler and let's see the coolers are being tested on the i7 12700k at 200 watts of power draw they're being measured against the evga clc 240 240mm aio with two arctic 120mm fans I am just using this cooler as a reference point, I don't expect something like the Hyper 212 to match this, obviously, but it does make a good reference point for the Hyper 620S. 
the testing was done via OCCT at small data set, normal mode and load setting at steady, and threading settings at auto. Things were tested at 20 degrees Celsius ambient through air conditioning. As you can see the Hyper 620S leads in performance. The Hyper 212 makes a really good showing at 91 degrees Celsius at 200 watts, quite impressive for something so compact. Then my good old AIO at 85 degrees Celsius as I've come to expect from it. Though I should add that the Hyper 620S was the noisiest of the three we have tested. It won at the cost of noise. Thank you for watching this video and thank you Cooler Master for lending me these review samples for testing. Please share this video, like and comment. Have a nice day.